قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs. You are fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. Don't fear anybody else, illa Allah, except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is telling us, good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity, but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of tests, and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah alladhi abda al aflaka wal arudina. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al anbiya. Sayyidil kaunaini imam al haramaini imam al qiblataini imam al atqiya. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa adamu bayna al ma'i wa tin. فقد قال الله وتبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق الرسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى he tells us in the holy Quran الذي he is the one خلق الموت والحياة he is the one who created death and he is the one who created life. In order to test humanity to see which of them is the greatest in Amalu Salihat and to see which of them is the best in doing good deeds. In Surah Al Anbiya of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells humanity. وَلَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةِ That certainly, وَلَنَبْلُوكُمْ We have tested you, بِالشَّرْ With adverse situations, with bad situations, with evil As well as Allah says that we test you as well with khair Both of them are tests in this dunya Sometimes you only recognize when it is adverse times come, that that is the only test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah clarifies. Every single situation that you go through in this dunya world is a test. Whether it's good or bad, both of them are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this is the condition of human beings, and this is how we have to live in this dunya we world, constantly being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then a man now and our individual, he is left with making choices. And those choices that he makes at the time of being tested, he can either do one of two. He can either choose and opt for the ta'at and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or he can choose otherwise. If it is he were to choose the ta'at and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is going to lead him towards a life of bliss. It's going to leave him towards contentment. It's going to leave him towards happiness. However, this man though, this individual, if he were to choose otherwise, then the very test that the same individuals, two individuals may be going through, if he were to choose the other one, not the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this very man is going to lead a life, such a life of misery, such a life of discontent, such a life he is going to have that nothing in this earthly life is ever going to please him at all. Sometimes we are fooled. We are duped in thinking that because a person is smiling who he loves, 
or because an individual he has a lavish house and he drives a nice car, that this person he is actually happy, he is masurur. However, the reality of it is that true happiness it's not something external. True happiness is a condition of the heart. True happiness is inside. True happiness is that feeling that is there permeating and coming out from the inside of an individual. There is where happiness actually lies. There is where sukoon actually is. There is where tranquility is. There is where contentment actually is. Majority of the world though, upon examining, when looking at the lives of people, we see that there are so many people in depression. There are so many people who in reality, although they may laugh, they are not actually happy at all. They are miserable. The lives that they are leading right now, there is no comfort at all. They are bubbling, they are just right there, their heads cannot come above the water at all. They are in misery. They cannot see past that at all. That's all they see, a life of depression and ruin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is al-Hakim and he is the most wise individual. Sending a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to teach humanity. That when these situations or when it is you recognize that you, this is your halat and this is your condition. As an individual, what are you to do now? However, what leads a person towards these different situations? Alama explain one and listen to them well and ask yourself, not with your mind and your thinking, ask yourself the questions as I go through them. Ask your qalb and ask your heart, am I really happy according to the Quran and the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or am I actually in misery? Am I really in depression that I am suffering from? Allah may explain, one of the reasons for depression that people go into is one, because they are always looking towards what other people have and they are never looking at what Allah has given to them. They are always looking, their gaze and their scope is always upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given towards other people. And they fail to recognize that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. So they are always despondent. They are always worried. Hey, how can I achieve that? How can I get this? Example, today there is a big craze in the world that the perfect body of an individual it consists of having six packs on abdominal that is ripped with a particular chest and your arms must be a certain way. Where did that definition come from that that's a perfect and healthy body? It's all a mechanism and a scheme to dupe you into trying it. To bind all the equipment and on the pills just to try to get a body like that. Who says that's the definition of a perfect body? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and hadith is in Abu Dawood Sharif. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says, I was very, very small, I was very skinny. And my mother, she was trying every single thing to try and get me to put on wheat. Because in those times, being a little bit fatty, that was actually Jamil, that was Jamal and that was beauty in their time. He says, my mother tried every single thing until finally she gave me a certain type of cucumber to eat. And after eating that cucumber, I started to put on weight after that. Then is when it was recognized and mother finally said, oh, you are looking beautiful now. So who is to give definitions of what beauty actually is or what your body actually is supposed to look like? Today there is a craze that you have to get these types of physiques. You got to be a size zero. If it is, this is not your size, then you are not pretty. You have lost so much of self-esteem and respect for yourselves that other people are making judgments on your, your behalf. You are not even thinking for your own selves anymore. You are now a slave to society. You have now become a slave answering the egos of other people and you don't even know what you stand for as an individual. And when you try everything and nothing works to getting that perfect body, what starts to happen to you as an individual, you doesn't feel good at all. Now it is I can't interact with this class of people. I cannot do this and I cannot do that because within myself I am thinking that I am not looking good at all. 
phenomena that is happening in our societies today. People are not eating at all. People are becoming more anorexic and people are just throwing away their good health for the description of another individual of what health actually is. How many individuals and how many people? They go towards a shop or they may see something on television, an advertisement. They see one person using some equipment, some appliance in the kitchen. You in reality have no use for it. The possibility is you can't even operate it. You will never even use that for the entire year. Because somebody has it, it's in your heart now, I must get it. When it is you get it now, now it's also causing a burden on each and every single individual around. The kitchen needs to be bigger now. It's packed under the closet, never being used at all. We are spending money on things that we have no use for at all. Don't even need at all. Nothing we are doing. Why? Because the power of advertisements, people are just duping us. Fooling us into spending. How much things do we have that we don't actually use at all? How many people have exercise and equipment at home and all it has is clothes on it? Cobweb maybe, you never even put it on maybe since you bought it, but you bought it just because somebody says you got to get fit. Somebody says you got to look good. Human beings today, they are not even thinking for their own selves. They are duped and they are fooled. And when it is the results that they think in their minds to achieve, they are not achieving it. Of course, it leads them to a state of depression now. That what I'm going to do, I am still the same size and I have spent thousands of dollars. Today, people, they get themselves hyped up on so many different types of medication. No doctor have ever prescribed a single drug for them, telling them that they are sick. Some individual who never sat one day in a lecture hall to study medicine, he tells you, you need this medicine and you need that. You need this, your eyes are not looking good, your hair is not good, you buy that. Every single thing you buy and what are you doing to your own self? The body that Allah has given to you, which before nothing was wrong with, you have now tarnished it and you have done so much bad. Why? Because you are only following the ideologies of somebody else. You are not doing procedures. You are not following things well. Well, let me explain. You want to be like other people. You want to get towards some dimension and some direction. And it's causing you within your own self not to feel comfortable. Your heart is palpitating. You are worried and you are concerned. What is going on with me? Well, let me explain. When it is your scope and your vision, it goes towards what other people have. It causes you to go into a state of depression. And with regards to mal and with regards to wealth, it also occurs. That sometimes you are working hard. And another individual is not working as hard as you. Yet still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing him. Allah is giving him so much. And you are now worried. That he can do so much of different things and you have to work so hard and you're not able to do it. He's vacationing every single year. He is able to do this and he is able to do that. But you are working so hard and you are unable to do these different things. Therefore, it's causing you to end up and slide towards a pit of depression. Well, let me explain. This is one thing that is plaguing the ummah right now. Your scope and your vision is always on the likes and the things of other people. And you're not looking at what is necessary, what you need to be doing as an individual right now. And the second thing that is causing people to end up into such a state where they are not happy with their lives at all. It's mercy and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's when people commit sins before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can never rest in peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created this soul of ours, that when it is we commit a single sin, it haunts us from then until. If ever we were to get in an argument with any individual, and we were to be wrong, although we will not admit that we were wrong, that one argument destroys all of our ibadat. Or let me explain. You stand in salat 
And when you stand in salah, the argument goes through your head 50 times. You forget what the imam is reciting. And every single time, a question pops in your head. Or an angle of argument of the other person, shaitan is right there as your lawyer. He gives you a defense. He always gives you something to say. You are in salat and shaitan is helping you to argue. And as soon as salat done, shaitan leaves and shaitan goes. That's why Allah describes him in the Holy Quran. Min sharril waswasil khannas. He is that being who inspires the hearts of people. But he is khannas. He is such an individual. He goes and he whispers and he pulls back. He goes and he whispers and he comes back. That's how shaitan he behaves. He incites and he gives you and then he pulls back. So now it is you committed disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you are miserable. Now you can't even concentrate in salat. You can't do any acts of ibadat at all. People who engage themselves in all of these different types of medias that are there today. In disobedience to Allah. Wives talking to other people's husbands. Husbands speaking to other people's wives. Illicit relationships over the internet are taking place. It's all the disobedience of Allah. Your son walks in, immediately the computer shuts off. Your daughter walks in, immediately the computer shuts off. Your relationships are such that you have something with some other woman. Your cell phone never ever has a text message on it. It's been deleted as soon as it comes. These are the fitna that are plaguing the ummah right now. These are the things that are happening right now within our societies and Muslim communities. So much ma'asi and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you go to your wife, who Allah says in the Holy Quran, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا That person who you're supposed to get sukoon and tranquility with, for the entire day, your heart was being made tranquil, with the words of some strange woman, now it is you go to your own house now. Now there is no more comfort anymore. Can't get any comfort with your wives anymore. Because why? Disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Transactions that you may do, they are wrong and they are bad. They are haram in Islam. You perpetrate such business transactions. You are always worried. I wonder if those people in authority will pick up with me. What's going to ever happen? I wonder if somebody will rat me out or sell me out because of the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It causes and it leads people to be in states of depression, wondering how to get out of all of these different things. That's why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, in one beautiful tradition in Sahih Muslim, where the Nabi of Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ Certainly, Successful indeed is that one who has accepted Islam. If you are a non-Muslim and you accepted Islam, the Rasul describes you as a fala, as a successful person. وَرُزِكَ kafafa, And you are sustained sufficiently. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the first thing is Islam. You are a Muslim. That's one stage of success. Second stage of success, وَرُزِقَ kafafa, That the sustenance of Allah is sufficient for you as an individual. That you can eat, your family can eat, and you can still put aside some for a rainy day. Kafafa, it is sufficient. Nabi of Allah says, this is something great. And he says the third one, وَكَنَّ Allahu, That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes sufficient. Bima atahu, that which he has given him. He makes a man contended with whatever he has given him. And this is the last one that many individuals are suffering from. That they are not contended with the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. And why is this? One, they are not recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of distribution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is in control of distribution of every single thing. If you understand the things that I have, the things that you have, you are not to get wanting more than that and wanting less. That was the distribution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's going to take away the depression that you have. But when you think that your efforts can only reign, 
And it's only through your efforts and you take Allah out of the equation. Well, of course, you're going to be in misery because now you don't know where it is you are getting it from. You think it's through your mujahada you are getting it. No, your mujahada coupled with acceptance from Allah. This is what Allah has given to you. The second thing, do not look towards what other people have. Rather look towards those individuals who have less than you. If it is you are to look towards those people who have way less than you, you are going to give more shukr and thanks to Allah. And your heart is never going to be zealous. It's never going to be always craving and wanting the things of other people. Always look towards those individuals who have way less than you. And the third thing, hey, be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes the responsibility of putting contentment in the hearts of people. You can't do that. Allah says, you be obedient to me and I will do that for you. I will put contentment in your hearts. I will make you not miserable at all. I will make you such a person without any worries at all. Well, let me explain. Having Allah on your side, it doesn't mean that you are sailing on a ship on such waters without waves. Rather, having Allah on your side means that you are sailing on such a ship that if a storm were to come, you will never ever be upturned. It doesn't ever mean having Allah on your side, your life is going to be blissful and every single thing is going to be great. Rather, what it actually means is that whatever test Allah throws at you, you are able to always do the right thing. You are always able to do the thing that is correct and you will never ever be disheartened and inside of you will never ever have this worry and concern. How many people today, they construct houses and they build mansions. But will the building of the mansions, they have so much worries. Allah says in the Holy Quran, He is the one, جَعَلَ لَكُمْ بُيُوتَ He is the one who has made for you houses in order that you live in sukoon and peace. Your houses, when it is you leave your every single day activity and you return home, your house supposed to be that place that brings about sukoon, tranquility and peace. That's what your home is supposed to be. When your home is under obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then and only then your houses are going to be filled with this sukoon, this peace and this tranquility. That you will not want to leave your houses, rather in your houses you feel every single thing is great. There is where Allah says, houses, this is the maqsad and the purpose of houses. When we build our houses, what's the maqsad and purpose we have within it? Why do we construct a house? Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, the pinnacle of doing anything is the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, let us kunu, to obtain, to have to get that tranquility, that peace, that beauty within our houses. This is the object of construction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Right now the Muslim Ummah, right now the world that we live in, millions of people are suffering from depression. Millions of people, they are not comfortable in the houses when they return home. They are actually miserable in the states that they have right now. They don't even want to do anything. So many people are on the verge of suicide. So many people, their marriages are on the rocks. So many youths, they have no option except to turn towards drugs and alcohol. So many people, they are without a single choice in their lives. Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, Don't look at other people. Don't get your scopes over there. Understand Allah's distribution and get obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll end with one tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in one beautiful hadith, Man lazima l-istighfar, that whosoever, he says, astaghfirullah plenty in his life, ja'ala allahu lahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make for him, min kulli dhiqin makhraja, from every time in his life that his chest is closing in, Allah will make a way out. وَمِن كُلِّ هَمِّن فَرَجَا Every single type of anxiety you are suffering in your life, Allah will also make a way out. وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ 
and Allah will provide for you from places where you never thought provisions will have come from. The Nabi of Allah gives us the remedy. He gives us the prescription to get rid of this depression that we are on. Understand the answers, they are not depression pills. If it is you are to read and you are to find out, these are only masks for the problem, it's not a cure. They only cover the problem, take an individual out of that and you see the misery that they are in. They want to kill themselves, looking for options and solutions. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have given us a prescription. Why not try the prescription of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why not try his prescription? For certainly his prescription were divine. His prescription came from the one who created you and I. His prescription came from one who is known as Al-Hakim, the wise one. Let us try it. Try the prescription from Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let's see if we can turn around the depressed world that we live in into a world that we can truly attain contentment, truly attain happiness, truly love what it is we actually do and really work towards the akhirat, work towards the hereafter. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blesses us and He grants us the tawfiq and He grants us the ability to be in His ta'at and to be in His obedience. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the depressions that our Muslim societies are going through and society at large, that Allah removes the depression and put sukoon, contentment in the hearts of people. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He opens our eyes towards the guiles that are there and we are able to be intelligent individuals, making intelligent decisions for the hereafter. I hope and pray that Allah blesses us and grants us firdaus. Wa akhir dawa'an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Saw his face so beautiful.